So, school food. Why does most of it look like this? When it should look like this? Well, it turns out the answer is more complicated than you think. The National School Lunch Program provides around 3.2 billion meals every year, averaging around 20 million meals every day, 76% of which are free or reduced. This is why it's so important to serve healthy meals because students across the country rely on them. The USDA requires schools to offer five components, a grain, a fruit, a veggie, and meat or meat alternative, and milk. Students must choose three of the five components, one of which being a fruit or a vegetable. So what's the issue? Well, there are four main barriers preventing school districts from serving the food that we all want to see. Government restrictions, cost, staffing, and sourcing. First, the USDA requires meals to meet particular specifications in order to be eligible for reimbursement. Basically, if the school district doesn't comply with USDA regulations, they won't get money. This makes it harder for schools to change the meals they typically offer because formulating new recipes might not align with the regulations they have to follow. It's typically easier for schools to just continue serving what they've been serving rather than formulating new recipes from scratch, especially if they aren't even sure if students will like the new recipes. Secondly, cost is a huge issue. The USDA reimburses around 77 cents for a paid meal, $4 for a reduced meal, and four and a half dollars for a free meal. This rate has to include the cost of food, labor, and overhead. And if the meals do not satisfy USDA requirements, the school will not be reimbursed. Big food corporations have reformulated many products to fit into school meal requirements, like how Lunchables created a school meal specific product. While these products may be appealing to food service directors and students, they are still ultra processed and high in sodium. Professional food service companies like Armark and Compass are able to mass produce heavily processed items at a cheap enough rate to schools so that they're able to afford them. And this makes it much easier for the schools to just use those products without having the hassle of scratch cooking themselves. These food service companies are hired by schools to manage cafeterias and sometimes schools can lose control over what is being served. Staffing is another barrier to scratch cooking in school cafeterias. These employees are often paid low wages and typically assigned part-time shifts. Additionally, many of these workers lack culinary experience. Allocating time for training is a huge hurdle, considering their time is dedicated to preparing, packaging, and serving current meals. Finally, sourcing creates another barrier for schools willing to change, especially if they're trying to find locally grown products. Finding a food provider that can meet volume and consistency requirements for thousands of school meals every day that's also affordable, nutritious, and appealing to students can be pretty difficult. Imagine you're a school trying to make a strawberry dish. It's harder to find a local grower who can provide enough strawberries for thousands of kids than to purchase pre-made meals that are designed for schools. But there is hope. My school has been working to provide plant-based meals and snacks as a whole food fiber-ish solution to this issue. Cafeteria staff continue to work tirelessly to provide food to students despite all these challenges, and it's time we support them with regulations encouraging healthier food while still following nutrition standards, better wages, and more investment into feeding the next generation.